All right. I think we are live. Yes, we are live. Great. All right. Yep. Hello, Vikas. How are you? Hey, Alexia. All good. How about you? All I'm well? good. I'm good. Yeah. Great, great, great. So this is our uh, second stream together. Like last month, uh, we did one. Yep. Yes. In Flex Gateway and this one will be on ELK. Yeah, I guess you liked it. So you came yep. back. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It was really good. Good experience. That is, yeah. yes. that is awesome. That is awesome. What, what do you like about the streams? Yeah, it's really good. Like, uh, you build your confidence for public speaking as well as you interact with the audience and answer their questions as well, which increases your knowledge as well. And we are able to give back to community also, whatever we know, like we can share our knowledge through this live stream and other people can also take advantage of the same thing. All right. Awesome. I like that. Uh, we haven't gotten people yet. So everyone sure, sure. watching, let us know where you're watching from. What time is it for you? What time is it for you, Vikas? It's 8 p.m. IST. 8 p.m. I yeah. am in 10.30 a.m. <laughs> 10.30 Okay. Great. So is this the last thing you do and then you go to sleep? That's all? Yes. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll have my dinner after this at around 9 p.m. And yeah, I'll go to sleep around 10. All right. Do you wake up yeah. early? Yeah, maybe I'll try to like uh, wake up around 6, 6.30 and they are trying to go for a walk but yeah, sometimes like uh, it's like the starting of the winter so in the morning like it's <laughs> it's really like uh, uh, like you want more sleep <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. So it's <laughs> really I difficult to leave the bed <laughs> yes yes you just want to be all snuggled up and yes warm. yes yes <laughs> So like it's more easy like when you are in the uh, like the summers or the rainy seasons like it's really good like to wake up early and go for a walk, but it winters it's like needs a lot of push. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. that. So yeah, but yeah. Hello. Hey, hey hi, Manas. <laughs> hi, Manas. I think people are join now joining in. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think they're kind of sleepy too because there are not a lot of people here. Um, oh, yeah, okay. that's winter. I also feel a little bit like, oh, it's getting cold. I just want to be like with a coffee or something, watching TV. <laughs> I don't want to do oh, anything. <laughs> great. This is starting off winters over here. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 It's like yeah. when did they end on February, March? The winters will end. Sorry? The winters will end, end around February or March and then the summer season will start when yeah. the winters will end, yeah. Yeah, kind of. So in here, maybe the late December or early January, we'll start having snow and then all January and February is snow. <laughs> so you can't really do a lot. Um, I think until like April is where it starts getting warm, like really warm. So oh. we still have a lot of it's very cold here. Yeah, it's <laughs> four to five months. Yes, but it's nice. I like it. Yep. All right. Um. Well, we don't have a lot of people in the chat, but that's fine. Uh, do you want to get started? Because yes, so you can get started in the meantime. People can join. Yeah. So I'll present my screen then. Yeah. Sure. Yep, we able to see my see uh, the same screen. Yes, I can see it. Okay, great. So uh, today uh, we are going to cover like uh, how do we integrate uh, Elk or ELK uh, with MuleSoft. So as we know, ELK is uh, like a third-party integration, uh, third-party logging tool. Okay, so basically, it's, uh, Elk is an acronym for uh, three open-source tools, uh, which we know as which we know as Elasticsearch. E stands for Elasticsearch, L for Logstash, and K for Kibana. Okay, so what are these uh, three components of Elk? So Elasticsearch is all over a NoSQL database, okay, which is uh, used for storing and indexing the logs. Okay, and then uh, Logstash is used for uh, centrally uh, managing and processing the logs. So it gets the input uh, from the source system and then 
uh, do some transformations if required and sends it to the uh, destination system and then uh, finally we have kibana which is the data visualization tool okay so it's the data visualization uh, data visualization tool okay so and it is the like for uh, centrally processing the logs this is no sql database so it's a data visualization, uh, visualization tool which helps in or uh, on creating the dashboards monitoring alerting and it works on the uh, the log data which is uh, stored and indexed in elastic search okay so now how do we integrate and why do we need the integration uh, of microsoft with elk so there are a number of reasons right so first and foremost like if you are deploying your apps on the cloud hub in that case you just only get only 100 mb or uh, the 30 days log retention period okay so if you need more logging retention then you obviously need some integration with the third party logging tools like elk okay and apart from that uh, you want your operations team to be more uh, like uh, more, uh, like operations team can easily go to these uh, logging third party logging systems and search for the logs so it will make the life easier as well okay and then uh, through the kibana we can create interactive dashboards okay and uh, we can have the uh, log uh, alert, alerting mechanism set up so there are like number of reasons like uh, uh, like why we, we can uh, why we should uh, bring uh, bring in integration with the uh, elk or any third party uh, logging tool like uh, splunk okay so there are two options which i'm going to demonstrate in this in the stream the first option is externalizing the cloud hub app logs okay so here uh, basically what we will do here uh, we will externalize the logs which are uh, deployed for the apps which are deployed on the cloud hub so here uh, what i will do i will be making a use of a uh, of, of a cloud hub uh, uh, i'll be making a use of the socket appender okay so what i'll do i'll configure the log for xml to uh, forward the logs to lo uh, the socket appender and the socket appender with then integrate with log stash and then log stash will push the logs to uh, elastic search and from elastic search it will show up in the kibana okay so let us see how it can be done so first of all uh, we will uh, start our elastic search i'll just i have downloaded all the uh, like these are the open source components available for download as well so we'll just uh, download elastic search log stash and kibana Okay, I have to download all these three components and extracted uh, the zip uh, the unzip these these files. So if I go inside it under the config folder under Elasticsearch, okay. So here uh, this is a configuration file that we need to uncomment some of the uh, attributes and then start the Elasticsearch. So some of the attributes which we need to uncomment are the, the path to data okay and then path dot logs okay and then we'll be uncommending the http port as well where the elastic search will be running okay apart from that i think uh, we can just uh keep this at But if you're planning to set up uh, uh, for your uh, in your environment, so yeah, in that case you will be uh, needing this network host, okay, where you'll be able to access this Elasticsearch, okay, like for the development to give your the production environments. Since for demonstration purpose, I'm just going ahead with the default HTTP port 9200. Okay, so yeah, so that's pretty much for the configuration on the Elk on the Elasticsearch. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and start it go to the bin folder command line okay so we have the elastic search dot back yeah well uh, give it a minute uh, for it to start
I really appreciate that you do everything from scratch because this will help a lot of people to see how to install it and everything. So that's great. Thank you. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, thank you, Alex. Yeah. So it's just getting started. Okay. And uh, we'll be seeing uh, it up and running on the HTTP port uh, 9200, uh, which was uh, there in the uh, config file. Does it have to be that specific port or can it be any port? It can be any port. I'm just going, going ahead with the default. Yeah. And we can use a network port also if you plan to set up in a development queue and production environment. In that case, we need to use that. Uh, if I show you again, if I go to this config. So here, uh, I'm using this default 9200 port, but network co host we can use uh, when we are planning to like implement it in our real time environments like type given. So, in that case, we have to provide the IP of the machine on which we are planning to uh, run this Elasticsearch. Got it. Okay, fine. So, it is looks like it's running now. So, let me just localhost 9200 yep so it is asking for a username and password so username will be default by elastic and password we need to reset okay so i again go go to the uh, bin folder here open the command line okay so we'll be having the elastic search reset password uh, elastic here we have elastic search Elastic search reset password user is elastic. Yes. Okay, I'm going to reset the password. Press yes. So here is the password which I have got. I'll just copy it. Okay, and I'll just go here sign in okay you see that and now elastic search is up and running you see over here that number is 8.10.4 is the number of this and it is up and running now. okay so we have configured our elastic search now we'll same similar way we'll con configure the kibana as well which is our data visualization tool uh to for the monitoring as well as for creating the interactive dashboards okay so here it is for kibana so Inside, same thing, config, Kibana. Okay, so here uh, we need to uncomment all these values again here, like the host, it will be by default running on the, so this is Elasticsearch host. So this, our Elasticsearch is running 9200. So we need to uh, uncomment this, okay. And then this is Elasticsearch username and password we need to uncomment. Okay, apart from that, let me see if we need anything else to com comment. Yeah, here it is. The Kibana will be running on this port 5601 and it will be host will be local host. Okay. So now here uh, we have provided this username and password Kibana system. So similar way we got the password for uh, Elastic user. The similar way we need to get the password for this Kibana system as well. So if I go here and execute the same command, Put here Kibana system. Okay, here it is a new value. So this is the password for Kibana, and this is the password for Elastic. Okay, so just open that config file again so here in the okay i have put in this password over here 
let me see okay the host and port are there and then elastic search port is there uh with the bana system password okay okay so yeah so that's pretty much about the kibana setup also so let me just try to run it kibana dot batch okay so it will take some time to run in the meantime uh, we are left with our log stash configuration so we'll do that as well i go to log stash okay so here again in the config file so here we uh the elk is already provided this log stash sample we just need to add it a few values over here so i'll just show you what i need to put in over here so here it is I just replace it with this so basically uh log stash has three components input filter and output okay so just one second i just need to remove this part it's not needed so input is like where it will be accepting the input from our log 4 xml file so it will be accepting on the tcp port which is 5044 and it will be in a json format filtering like on which on what uh, uh, what basis the, the, the logs need to be filtered so here i'm filtering the ones which is having the time in the milliseconds it's called in the unix ms format and output is where it needs to send the logs so, so when it gets the logs from log 4 xml then it it needs to send the logs to elastic search here okay so elastic search is running on 9200 port so here we need to do the index we have need to get an index as well because whatever logs are stored in the elastic search they have to be indexed as well so i'll just be providing uh this uh name as elastic elk is test stream as an index name and username is elastic so we need to provide the password that we initially reset so i just i have noted that down so here is a password that okay so i'll just put the password here okay so yeah so just remember like three things input filter and output for log stash okay and one last thing that we need to do to configure it it's in the log stash pipelines.yml file okay so here uh, we just need to uncomment some of the uh, lines over here like uh, how many workers will be used how many batch size will be for the pipeline so those things we just need to uncomment yeah. okay so like this and just uncomment this as well okay so we'll run the pipeline and uh, enable our log stash then okay let me see if i have run all the steps and i'm not missing anything okay yeah so the next step is to just run our log stash i'll be just going to log stash bin folder okay and here in the command line okay so i'll just see if the kibana has yeah so kibana i think yeah it, it, it is still in the process of loading so let me just try to run the uh log stash as well okay so we have this is a command to run the log stash log stash hyphen hyphen then config log stash sample.conf log stash sample.conf is the same file that we have edited so here it is under the config folder here is the log stash sample okay so i'll just go ahead and uh, center here so do you have to run this in an order we are done config for uh i don't think so like it can be in any order uh, uh alex because i have run both of them in pair like log stash and kibana since kibana was and this as well log stash 
Hmm. Okay. okay. So yeah, let's see how what goes. So basically, we have done the configuration for logs dash uh, elk and uh, kibana. Okay, and uh, we'll now uh, configure our log for JXML with the socket handler so that it can forward the logs to logs dash. Okay, so let them run. Okay, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So here it is like I have a uh, simple uh, demo application. So what I'm doing that I have configured a listener on port 8081 and I'm just saving. So I think it's not responding. Let it, uh, let it respond and then I can issue. Yeah, so log stash is up and running. So Rana to get complete. Let it turn over here. Okay, to get the uh, input request here on the path API. And then in the transform message, I'm just uh, converting the payload received into the uh, JSON format. And then I'm just uh, setting the payload over here and uh, in the logger, I'm just logging the payload which I sent. Okay, so whatever payload I sent, uh, this should be uh, logged in ELK. Okay, so now here we have we have the new soft over here. So now we have to uh, put the socket appender in the log 4 j to XML. Okay, so that it transfers out forwards the logs to log stash and then this chain can complete. Okay, so I have opened the log for j to XML. So under appenders, so appenders is already a existing tag in this log for j to XML. We have to include a new tag called socket. Okay, the socket name is localhost and port is 5044. So now how do we get this port? So if I go show you the log stash configuration, if you remember, we have put this port over here. Okay, so this is the TCP port on which the log stash uh, will be listening to the requests coming from the log 4 j to XML. So here, the log 4 j to XML will be forwarding the logs to this port 0, 5044 on which uh, the log stash will be accepting the request over here. Okay, and then we'll be sending it to the elastic surgeon. Consequently, we'll be seeing logs in Kibana. Okay, so JSON layout is uh, uh, the true and event EUL is also true. Then uh just in the async root level info also just put this appender reference to socket here okay so that's it that's all the configuration that we need to do okay and we'll just run one test and we should be able to see the box in the so i think we need to give a couple of minutes more for kibana to come up after that i can just run that transaction in the meantime just be running it yeah just run it one more thing like they would like to uh, like a, uh whenever we are external using the cloud hub logs okay is cloud hub system or the runtime logs to the external uh, third party lo uh, loggers okay only the application related logs can be uh, forwarded okay uh, in your environment make sure that uh, the cloud hub logs are disabled okay so so first we have to uh, disable the cloud hub logs only only then you would be able to forward them to the third party uh third uh third party logging systems okay without uh, disabling the cloud hub logs you cannot forward the logs to third party system. 
and in case like where you want to uh, like uh, keep the logs both in cloud hub as well as in the third party uh, uh, login systems in that case first you have to disable the uh, cloud hub logs and then you have to use a cloud hub appender okay which will uh, forward the logs to cloud hub and then you have to use accordingly the socket appender or the http appender to forward the logs to the third party systems third party logging systems okay so there are various ways like in which uh, the logs can be forwarded to the third party logging systems like uh, i'm in this uh, session i am demonstrating through a socket appender but we can use an http appender also okay so different options are available so based on the requirement uh, the uh, decision can be taken okay with which approach uh, we want to go ahead okay so still taking time and apart from this alka like the other uh, uh, logging systems are available like splunk is also there so you can also get that uh, set up as well so before uh, going to which whichever uh, the third party logging uh, systems you want to uh, implement first like you must weigh their uh, pros and cons and understand like okay uh, these are the benefits which i'm will be getting out of this and only uh, make a decision okay which uh, which logging uh, tool you want to go ahead and implement uh, for you uh, in your environment okay in uh, alex if you have any questions you can take them up in the meantime i don't see any questions yet but i was curious like why would you choose el key over something else like what is your experience yes so no like lab basically like uh, uh in our project like we have been using L elk so i just wanted to explore more about that so that led me like uh that, that prompted me to come up uh, with the demonstration i'd like to explore like how actually it is working so so yeah so that was the only reason but yes uh there uh, there should be like pros and cons should be weighed uh, before making any decision whether it's elk or splunk or any other uh third party logging system that is available in the market and to try and this out you you can try it for free right yes it's an open source product elk is open source we can try it mm -hmm. free as well cool yeah it's like all the three components are open source yeah so skibana is taking a bit of time i'm not sure <laughs> why like <laughs> so our application is deployed and it is up and running so yeah we should be good once it's skibana uh it's up and running we can try uh hitting one one request okay but yeah in the meantime in the interest of time i think uh, i can just uh go ahead with the second option also we can just i can tell you uh, what is the second option okay so first one was related to the cloud hub logs cloud hub app logs so here the second option is is externalizing the customer hosted mule logs okay so here our mule runtime is hosted on our customer premises okay uh so it's not hosted on the cloud hub so basically here we have the liberty to forward both type of logs so if you remember like for cloud hub it's only app logs but in here for the custom hosted runtimes we can forward both logs the system logs as well as the app logs okay so again uh, there are various uh, like uh, 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 various options available to forward the logs so one so the one which i have taken for this demonstration it makes use of the file beat so file beat is like an agent okay which on it's running on the server in which the mule runtime is hosted and it will be uh constantly monitoring uh, the log location okay and then will be uh, it will be forwarding that logs to the elastic search and from elastic search kibana will be able to display them okay so this is a generally recommended approach uh, which is which is uh, quite uh, widely followed when when we have to forward the logs in case of our customer hosted runtimes okay yeah i think tibana is also run okay yay <laughs> great so i'll just try to hit one request and see
my name meetup is linked on meetup like this date is this i just sent this okay got the payload let me just try to uh log into kibana so this is a port which we have configured in the kibana configuration file 5601 so same we need to put it over here the password for elastic i think i mentioned it somewhere yeah here it is Cover. Okay. I'll just put the index name over here. Just cancel it. Data data view. Okay. So here the index which I have created in the log stash. Configuration we need to put that over here. We will get a string. Okay. Link demo. Okay, save data to view to Kibana. Okay, so I'll just I'll do one thing. I'll just uh, search for my name, Sharma Vikas, and we should see a hit over here. Yep, we see it one hit. The time is 2030. So I'll just hit it two minutes back. The current time is 2032. You see, it has come over here in Kibana, all the way through log for data XML to log stash to elastic search, and then finally landing in Kibana. So we See here, here is a message name Kacharma Vikas Meetup is linking Meetup and it is today's date. So, this is how you externalize the Cloud Hub blocks. Okay, since like uh, it's, it's the disabling of the Cloud Hub blocks is not uh, like available uh, for the trial version, so that's why I demonstrated through Anicron Studio. Uh, but yes, to just externalize through extra Cloud Hub blocks, you just disable your logs, Cloud Hub blocks first, and then just deploy your this endpoint studio uh, the, uh, the application here from uh, from here and uh, deploy it in the cloud hub and your logs will be getting forwarded to the third party logging system okay so that's about the part one of today's session like externalizing the cloud hub app logs so do we have any questions so alex before we move forward to the second option there is one question um how mm -hmm. are logs configured on kubana logs configured on kibana so basically kibana constantly monitors our uh, the uh, elastic search basically the logs are indexed and stored in in elastic search and kibana analyzes those logs from the elastic search and displays them so we have various options here like in in kibana if i show you there are different options here we very vast to display we have dashboard we have canvas maps everything is is based on the data which is stored in the elastic search which is our no sql database okay so kibana is just uh, like it's doing for the analytic purposes and it, it it can be used for alerting mechanism also suppose you're getting so many repetitive errors or some uh, exceptions are there so it can be used to configure the uh, alerts alert mechanism also so basically for data visualization for dashboard for more interaction uh interactive purposes for alerting mechanism all these uh, like kibana is used thank you any other question alex before we move forward nope all good okay fine so the second part the second part is uh externalizing customer hosted mule runtime logs so as i told you we'll be using making use of a file beat lightweight agent okay which will be constantly monitoring our mule uh, and uh, mule logs and uh, forwarding those to elastic search and then to kibana 
okay so uh, for, for this i think uh what we need to do first we just need to go to my any point platform So basically, we need to deploy our wrap on our, our mule runtime. Okay, so our mule runtime will be like deployed on my local machine over here. It will be up and running here. So what I did, I downloaded the standard on mule runtime version. I extracted it, and now I'll be just be adding this in the go to this runtime manager and then servers. I'll just add a server over here. Okay, so I just put the uh linked in demo okay i'll just uh copy this command and then go to mule runtime under bin since uh, that command is specifically for our unix boxes so i'll just move this dot and slash and make it run on the windows machine Oh, okay, fine. So wait a sec. This is already been configured basically, okay? The demo. So just give me a second. New server is already configured. Remove this server and turn UI and move it. Okay, fine. So let me create a fresh, uh, I'll just be, Moving it, okay, and I'll just be. Uh, let me just create one uh, new account. time manager and I'll just extract this again into sandbox to the servers Add a server. So here again, I just put in the name over here. LinkedIn demo. Copy the command. Okay, and go to new runtime. Bin command prompt. Paste it. Remove this dot and slash. So now you will be seeing that a server appearing over here in runtime manager which i am setting up on over my local machine yep so, yep it is there in the created state now i just need to execute the mule batch file to get it in the running state okay so i'll just run it okay so what i observed like okay in this mule runtime 4.5.0 it is expecting uh the jre file to be placed in this location so we are in the f drive mule runtime mule enterprise 4.5 bin and then adoptium jre and this hotspot okay so i just need to copy my 
from the C drive is Java setup and just paste it over here. Okay, it will be in our program files. Okay, elastic or optimum. So I'll just copy that. Okay, I'll just note the file. It's in the uh, 4.5. bin and then adopt into the folder and to create over here. and I just paste this over here so this is the file it is expecting over here I'll just try to run it again and now it will be able to uh, run my server Let me see. It, is. it should be coming into running state now. I think this is the first time that I see how to create a server ever. <laughs> I had never seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep, here it is. So server is created now. I'll be deploying my app on this server okay and then we'll be seeing that how file bit uh, will be reading the logs and sending it to Elasticsearch and kibana okay so now uh this part is done now we move over to the file bit part okay so file bit part i was testing a while back okay so so we have copied it into our program files file bit here is the file bit okay so we and again in the configuration file so this file bit will be set up as a Windows service. Okay. If I go here, in the services, you will see here the file bit, the file bit, and but it is in the running state. So I think I need to make it in the stopped state. Okay. So let me just see it but it is always already in the running state so let us try sending the logs so basically uh, in this file be, file bit or yaml configuration file i'll just need to uncomment a couple of lines over here like the log id is my file stream id and the main important thing is the path you can configure any number of paths over here so i'll just configure the path where the logs will be sent to my mule runtime server so if you see over here f drive mule runtime Mule Enterprise standalone 4.5.0 logs. So if I go here in my F drive, okay, so here in F drive, I'll be having Mule Runtime, Mule Enterprise standalone 4.5.0, and then here is the logs. So I'll be able to see Mule Enterprise additional logs are already here. So now my app logs will also be coming to this location. Okay, and, and since the file beat, uh configuration file is is monitoring is having this location so we'll be able to uh, file bit again will be able to monitor this location and send the logs to Elasticsearch. okay so yeah so how to get that elastic uh, how to get that file bit into a running state okay so these are the commands like uh, uh which 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 uh, uh we need to uh like we need, need to execute to set up that file be it window service okay so and one more thing which i forgot if i scroll down in the file be it so yeah here it is so since how would a uh, file be would identify be, uh, where it needs to forward the logs it has to forward the logs to elastic search right so where the elastic search is running it is running on localhost 9200 username is elastic and password again i have copied it somewhere the password so i just copy that and paste it over here okay Yep, so now we should be good. Okay. So, yeah, so now we should be good. Uh, 
just show you this uh, setup also how do we configure this file bit as a service okay i'll just show you that also to you so since this also already is running i'll just show you this so i open the uh, powershell here as an administrator so this is how you will be setting up this file bit as a windows service okay so these are the commands so you need to first go to the location where we have the file bit copied okay the it's copied over here That was too much power for a big ass computer, <laughs> I feel. Because <laughs> he was running like Elastic and Cubana and Logstash, and then he was running the Mule application locally, and now he was running the server. <laughs> that is too much. And then he was also running like the stream. So. Yeah, probably his computer just crashed or something. Hopefully not, but sounds like it. Because also, like, it wouldn't you wouldn't think that running this stream takes a lot of memory from you, but it does. So I actually have to um, connect my computer to two different um, energy sources. I have my laptop um, charger, the normal one, and then I have also my a uh, screen connected that is also charging the computer i need these two sources otherwise it doesn't work anyway um i had shared in the chat in linkedin and in twitch um there is a complimentary video that you can check out um vikas had already created a video in his um, YouTube channel, Your Integration Buddy. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can also go check it out. I think it's... Oh, I don't see how... I don't see it. Anyway, it's uh, it's from a Mulesoft meetup, from what I can see. And he demonstrated the same things just in a Mulesoft meetup. So it will have a slightly different format but it will have essentially the same information. So you can go check it out. Um, you can also just search for externalized Mulesoft logs to ELK. Let me write that down. Uh, at your, what? Your integration buddy. Your integration buddy in YouTube. So search for externalized meal sub logs to ELK and you will find that under the channel of your integration buddy in YouTube. And there you will also be able to find the video of because doing this thing. Let's just wait a few minutes. Um, let's see if he comes back. I think probably his computer crashed because uh, it was a lot of things that he was running. That's totally fine. It happens. It's a stream. And he was kind enough to do everything from scratch. So he installed everything. He started running everything. So you could actually see how to do everything from scratch in case you run into issues or something. You can see exactly what he did step by step. Um, he finalized the Cloud Hub one at least. But he was still going to do the customer hosted one that's all right i also learned how to use uh how to create a server as i was saying like i had never seen that before oh i'm just seeing that you can also find this in mule ace academy oh that's cool i love when people 
um, share about their stuff in YouTube. I love to see all the different YouTube channels. Um, so keep on coming. Uh, in the meantime, are there any questions about this? I mean, I know because is not here, but um, in case he can still come back. Uh, so there are some questions for him or for me. I'm here. <laughs> Why not? Also, today is October 31st. Are you all getting um, a costume or something? I am. I am going to be dressing up as... What's his name? Um, blanking out. I don't remember his name. Uh, the guy from Ratatouille uh, that goes with Remy. Remy the mouse. Um is it a mouse or is it a rat? I don't know. But anyway, I got this so cute Remy that you can put, like, it has a magnet so you can put it on your clothes or something. I don't think I will be able to put it on my head because then the magnet would have to be, like, in my hair or something like that. But anyway, I'm going to put it, like, here. So I will have, like, the little Remy uh, with me all the time. And I will be dressing up as a chef. So... That is cool. That is cool. I like that. I am not a chef. I do not know how to cook. That is one of my biggest regrets in life that I never learned how to cook. And every time I try now, I mean, I can do it, but it doesn't taste good. So <laughs> I don't really like to cook because I don't really like what I cook. So what, if I don't like it, why would I make other people eat it? right it doesn't make sense anyway um i don't know if because he's coming back but we still have eight minutes left so i don't know what i can talk about have you been seeing my code tover videos by the way if you go to youtube and search for code tover you will be able to find all of my videos. I don't think anyone else is doing the code over in YouTube, but me, perhaps. I don't know. Or if you go to my channel in YouTube, ProzDev, you will also be able to find all of my playlists. And one of those playlists is the code over videos. Or you can also go to prosdev.com slash slash videos. And there you will be able to see all of the latest videos that I've created. And you can scroll down to get to the Codetober playlist. I haven't even seen it lately. I think it is updated. <laughs> Let me just double check. Um, oh, actually, you can also go to Prazov.com. And in the first thing that you will see in Featured, there is a Codetober stuff. Oh, Vegas is back. Yay. Did you crash hey, your Alex. computer? <laughs> yeah, something happened. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't aware. Like, sorry for that. No worries. Oh, sorry. That's fine. I was saying, like, maybe you were running too many things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Since I think that's why it's something, yeah. So it ran out of memory, basically. <laughs> yep. That's all right. Oh, and he is off again <laughs> oh no <laughs> did we break because computer oh that's bad that's bad ah uh, yeah you're right <laughs> like uh, running out of memory let me just close a couple of things over here that's all right <laughs> is your computer okay though <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good, all good, all good. Actually, I didn't uh, get to know that, that okay, that it has run out of memory for this. Yeah, but now I think it should be okay. Okay. So all I was right. just trying to, from, uh, I think, uh, when did you lose me? Like, at what point? Yeah, more or less at this point, you were doing the, the oh, server okay. stuff. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. So basically, I'm just deployed the application here in the uh, new runtime is hosted on my uh, laptop. So, let me just try to hit this. Uh, I'll just uh, put some other name over here. Sharma Ankit and let's try to run it. 
okay i got the response also okay so uh, let me just see the logs so if the i see in the logs in the scatter gather okay and what was logged i can just check that the scatter gather flow is completed successfully and it is logged by file bit so i'll just copy that text and go to kibana so here uh, since we created the index which is file bit so I just click on this index file bit and i should be able to see the logs not appearing over here let me just try to send it again Let me just try to restart uh, the file bit service. Just one second. Okay, it's now running state. And one more request. Yeah, maybe Alexa will need to revisit the settings mate might be once again. Okay. But uh, this is the complete process, like how do we configure uh, via file bit as well? Okay, maybe I this service is not getting started properly, the file bit. But uh, yeah, these are all the steps which we need to follow and since our file bit will be monitoring this logs location, so all the mule runtime as well as app logs will flow to our ELK. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and I also yep. shared your your video so people can go to that and see it as well. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. And I'm sorry for that. I think, yeah, so like a lot of things were running. So but I tried to cover most of the things like okay, so from the scratch, and yeah, people can see it and uh, and they can try on, on their own as well. Yeah. So hope I think people can, can benefit from this. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of power. Even I've been victim of that. <laughs> like running the stream also takes a lot of your memory. So yeah, that's yes, all right. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, Alexa, I think, yeah, if there are not any questions, I think we can, we can close it. Yeah, that's great. I don't see any more questions, so. Yeah, that is awesome. I really appreciate you doing everything from scratch, even though it was going to take a lot of time, because that helps a lot for people to see exactly what are the steps to do it in case they sure. miss something. Sure. So, yeah. Thank you. This was great. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye bye. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.